All right, all right. Today is April the 1st, 2019. Second quarter. Second quarter. <laughs> First quarter's done. So if you haven't uh, got all your New Year's resolutions intact, in it's about that time because 90 days has already passed mm. and we're right on to the second quarter. So uh, happy April Fool's Day. To everybody out there, but uh, Josh, we're not going to be fooling around today. No. Because uh, we are live from the Growthly Studios, and we are doing the uh, Quitters Revolution podcast, where uh, we are changing the negative connotation associated with the word quit and making sure that everybody is out there is quitting all the negative thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and sometimes people yeah. that have been holding them back. Mm. Uh, so so first off, I'm pleased to announce that our uh, first guest on the Quitters Revolution is none other than Joshua Webb, who is the founder of uh, Growthly. Mm. Uh, so welcome, welcome, Josh. To I'm very, very happy to be the uh, inaugural guest of what I, I really... I'm excited to see you as a show because this show is is about so many things that nobody likes to talk about. Right. And the thing about things that nobody likes to talk about is they're mind changing, life altering, uh, because you never hear them. And so when you do hear them, you have to latch onto them. And so uh, this is something that from the first moment that you and I chatted, from the first moment I went to his book launch, that That's right. that I knew that this was going to be something really amazing. So I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Well, thank you for being our very first guest. And uh, I am the undisputed. I am the self-proclaimed <laughs> undisputed heavyweight champion of quitting. Uh, so, Josh, you will have a chance to uh, be a champion and have the <laughs> ability to take my belt, depending on how brutally honest you are, uh -huh. how raw, how uncut you are, because at the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to inspire people out there that are having tough times, that uh, maybe are, are dealing with some self-doubt and, mm -hmm. and fear, and I want to bring people that are successful mm -hmm. in on this conversation to really <clears throat> feel and, and really tell them about what it is that they had to quit mm. uh, in their lives in order to realize some sort of success. And uh, none, in my opinion, no no one better than to start this conversation off uh, than you. So first off, let's tell our audience, uh, you know, where you're from, who oh, you wow. are, et cetera. Well, I suppose it's easier to say where I'm not from. Uh, <laughs> born and raised in Southern Indiana. Um, I'm actually from a place where it, we lived in such a small town that when we got a McDonald's uh, up on a hill, it almost looked like a shrine, right? Oh, wow. and so if any, I think my brother liked the fact he was going to be watching this video today, so he knows what I'm talking about. We had a Walmart, uh -huh. and we had a McDonald's, and that was it. Oh, wow. And then we had corn farming. That's small. And, exactly. Small yeah. town, USA. Yeah, yeah. And, and so one of the things that, that always was uh, important to me was getting out of there, mm -hmm. right? Quitting being in a small town. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's <laughs> that, a good quit. That was my first quit. <laughs> Quitting being in a small town because okay. for me it was too small. But born and raised in Southern Indiana, I uh, spent the majority of my life. Um, yeah. I was started designing, uh, doing graphics and brand development when I was in high school. Uh, quickly um, got like a class where I was the only kid there. Mm -hmm. I got an A to sit in an office and do artwork for the school. Okay. So I did that for half a day. and Age then good. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moved from there, um, was, was living in a larger town next to us, um, really trying to just find myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started escalating, right? And I got to like the pinnacle, like okay. the highest place you could work in my area right. in, in a graphic design field. Uh -huh. uh, was a part of the Graphic Arts Union. Uh, I was making the most money I'd ever made in my life. Okay. That's a good thing. 9-11 happens. Okay. And all of us guys that had just about signed their union papers, bottom of the line, we all got laid off. Wow. I couldn't even get an interview because everybody else that was around there knew what I was making there. They just look at my resume and they say, oh, you worked there. Right. Well, so if we give you a job, you're going to stay here for all of five minutes until you find something better, right? So the fact of where I had been uh, was an issue. Got you. So what happened was I had to quit what I was used to doing. 
Right. And for a time, I worked with a guy from church. I laid kitchen floor, laid bathroom floor, started doing these little remodels because, it, yeah, it wasn't designed, but it's the job I could get. And and that, that went on for a while, and some friends of mine said, hey, we see you up there kind of doing different things. Why don't you come down to Mexico? We're living down here. We got some friends, and we're having a good time. And so I went down there, ended up staying there for many years, uh, living there, just really enjoying the life, enjoying the style of, of – uh, like here we say everything's yesterday, right? Okay. Well, yeah, in Mexico, yeah. everything's tomorrow. Got you. And Got it was you. just completely different type of situation of life, of living. And culture. And, and yeah. culture, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And so uh, all that happens, been there for many, many years. And then I end up in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, in Tucson, I, I met my now wife, Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, and a whole different chapter in life started there. And so, uh, you know, like, like I said, sometimes it's easier to say where I haven't been. Just because right. people people think, oh, you from Texas? No. Are oh, you from Arizona? No. I'm not from Mexico. <laughs> I'm really from Indiana, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> right, right, right. And there's a whole bunch of things that you got to quit in order to be married too. Oh, geez. So, so that's a that's a, another topic for another conversation. But um, what I, I'm very interested in knowing, knowing, Josh, what is your take? on this whole quitters revolution movement just quitting in in general do you consider yourself a quitter that's a really good question uh actually yeah um in fact when people ask me to introduce myself they'll say like like what are you you know and they expect mm -hmm. me to say like well i'm a multiple entrepreneur and i have all these businesses and the, typically the first thing that i say and a lot of people know this is i'm a serial failure mm. Uh, I, I've failed a lot. I've failed hard, and then occasionally I've failed miserably. So that's a good quit. Quit trying not to fail. <laughs> when you when you go for perfection, well, obviously one of the first things we say around here is uh, perfection is the enemy of progress, right? Because you're always trying to fix it, fix it, fix it instead of do it. Right. But I've failed so many times, and I never set out to fail. I don't think anybody sets out to fail, mm -hmm. but failure is not necessarily a bad step. Mm -hmm. Failure is not a negative if you can take what you've done and you can learn from it and you can create something different, if you can change. And that's the biggest thing that makes failure a failure if you're unwilling to change. Got you. If you're unwilling to see the part of you that led to the failure, whether mm -hmm. it was you, circumstance, or whatever, mm -hmm. and change it. Gotcha. It's the non-change that leads to misery, mm -hmm. sadness, depression, all of those things. Um, do you think? Do you think? And I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you think having a mindset of failure or 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 failure is going to be an option prepares you to to want to go fail or seek failure or run towards failure? I don't. How do I put this? I don't know that I run towards failure, and I don't necessarily think I'm telling anybody else to run towards failure. But what I am telling you to do is run towards the best situation. Mm -hmm. So we were going through a rebrand here recently, um, which you, none of you know about yet because we're still working on it. And we ran into a situation where we had to reach out to a local company who started using our name mm -hmm. eight days before we were going to launch it. Wow. Uh, and so somebody asked me, like, are you married to this name? And I said, no, I'm married to success. Mm. So that right there is the key difference. If you can say to yourself, I'm not married to perfection, I'm married to success, then failure's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm running towards failure. I'm just saying I want to run towards whatever is going to indicate to me I need to change. Got you, got you. And that might mean that there's a failure mm -hmm. because I'm willing to recklessly run towards whatever it is I'm trying to do. And, and sometimes that means launching something before I'm ready. Sometimes that means putting out a sales page before it's really, you know, been graphiced well. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that is, you know, somebody will chime in, they'll go, oh, well, I just realized you have like misspellings all over that page. Yeah, and yeah. then my question to them is, how many landing pages do you have? Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so you mentioned success. Yeah. What's your definition of success? Because a lot of people have different mm. definitions of success, and and uh, what I consider success may not be what you consider success. So, what what do you consider success? Success. So, what I consider success is uh, the morning that I can wake up and not check my bank account. Got you. <laughs> Got you. So, so success is tied into a monetary component for you. You, you know, for, for, for me it is. And I think a lot of that stems back from my childhood. Um, mm -hmm. 
a lot of people can say this, like when you're growing up, you don't necessarily know how poor you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You, you know, you, you might feel poor, but you know, then you look back and you're like, Oh, holy crap. Like we were, we were poor. Right. Right. Like beans and potatoes poor. Gotcha. But you know, when you're in the middle of it, you don't necessarily know. And I know now looking back, uh, a lot of my insecurity and my instability today mm -hmm. comes from just that, that kind of growing up in a situation where Hold on, John, you, you're admitting that you're insecure. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. All right. I, two things you can know about me. Uh -huh. Actually, three things. One, okay. uh, I'm fat, and if you couldn't tell, it's right here. Two is uh, I'm I'm a super insecure person. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, I fight depression on a regular basis. Gotcha. And and people think if anyone out there thinks that they're going to start a business and not um, be insecure and not fight depression, then you're totally wrong and we should probably grab coffee and have a conversation about that before you get started. Mm -hmm. uh, the fat doesn't necessarily come with that. Th this, this was before. Got you. This has always been. <laughs> uh, I, I was in Little League one summer and uh, I didn't play Little League the next summer mm -hmm. and by the end of that summer, I was a chubster. Got you. And that was it. Yeah. Well, I, was, I, was, I was chubby as well to make you feel better, you know? But, but I, I, think, I think owning one's insecurities and owning the fact that, that we all get sad and depressed about the situations that we're in leads to the ability to run towards success. Right. It leads to the ability to be okay with the failure. Mm -hmm. it, it's when you, uh, okay, for instance, I, I meet a lot of people that, that want to start businesses. I meet mm -hmm. a lot of people that want to, you know, create this next great idea. None of them want to be prepared for the fact that it's totally going to blow up in their faces. Mm. So they live in this bubble of 100% success, mm -hmm. no time for change in their idea, no time for change in the concept, no pivot points, nothing. Mm -hmm. So they live in this whole place of like, everything's gonna work out. And that's so friggin' impossible. Impossible. <laughs> like, Quit thinking everything's gonna work it's out. It's not. It's not gonna work out. And, and setting yourself not up. Not everything. Setting yourself up for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just leads to misery. Right. I've met more entrepreneurs. Sorry, I'm going to get a little. I, I met more people who think they're entrepreneurs. Got you. And the biggest thing is they got with their grandma's cousin's aunt's nephew to design their logo, mm -hmm. which was crap. Right. They picked a name that does not, has nothing to do with uh, their customers and has everything to do with shit they like. Mm -hmm. And they ran to Wix and got a website. They went to Vistaprint and got some business cards, and they're in business. And the problem with it is is they don't even know what they do. Mm -hmm. They need to quit trying to identify themselves as an entrepreneur and start reaching out to customers. Love it. Love it. I can't stand it. But, but entrepreneurship, uh, it, it's so popular. It's so popular nowadays, and, yeah. and, and it's almost a sense that if you're not an entrepreneur, then you're not successful or you're not doing it well, um, and, and there's no way to, to be successful and to have, you know, be a multimillionaire, et cetera, without being an entrepreneur. Well, I mean, first of all, I think trying to tell yourself that you have to be an entrepreneur is, again, one of the things you have to quit. Yep. Because some people out there just need to get a great job. Right entrepreneurship is not in their future. Mm -hmm. and, and I hate to say that to folks, but I mean, you may be sitting there thinking right now, uh, I need to quit my job. Like that, that's the thing I need to quit. And mm -hmm. the thing is, until you have customers, until you have a solid business, quitting your job is basically saying, I want to be homeless. Right. You know, uh, there's a difference between living like you have already succeeded uh -huh. and spending like you have already succeeded. Ooh. People screw that shit up a lot. Got you. And they run out and live like they've succeeded by throwing money to the wind. Uh -huh. And then they were like, what happened? Like, it didn't work. My business didn't function. I said, but you weren't in business. You uh -huh. were in spend. There you go. And you need, to, you need to quit that. But coming back to what you were asking me, uh -huh. I, I think that in my history, in my opinion, what, what I've lived through is I would rather ask somebody, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And dig deep into that. And the first thing they have to quit doing when I ask them that question is they have to quit lying to themselves. Quit lying to yourself. I, typically, if I ask somebody, what do you want? Their first, second, and third answers are not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. They're all tied to what they think they can do or what they think they can learn how to do. Mm -hmm. And I have to get rid of the chaff and get underneath that. And finally, about the fourth or fifth answer, they're actually gonna tell me what they actually want. 
Mm-hmm. And most of them believe it is completely and wholly impossible. Mm-hmm. So what you have to quit thinking is you have to quit thinking that the impossible is impossible. Mm-hmm. Then once you achieve that and you start realizing that the things that I want could be possible, that's when I can really work with a person and find out, should they be an entrepreneur? Mm-hmm. I have people come to me, Jason, with great like pop culture ideas mm-hmm. that are already out there making money. Yeah. But just because something exists and it's making money for them doesn't mean that it would be good for Jason. Right. You know, right. you you could come to me and say, I want to sell shoes because shoes are a hot market, you know, a multi billion dollar market. Okay, mm-hmm. fantastic. But will selling shoes bring you any sort of fulfillment? Right. Well, no, but everybody wears shoes. Huh. Well, okay. So what you'll do effectively is you could start that company. Mm-hmm. Jason could sell shoes. You might sell millions of dollars worth of shoes. Mm-hmm. Right. So quick question. Do you think that you can be a successful entrepreneur and also have a corporate job? Oh, hell yeah. I'm a living example of it, right? So I have an entrepreneurial spirit, right? but I still have a corporate job. I love my corporate job. And I'm very successful at my corporate job, and I have uh, five mouths to feed right. on a, on a daily basis. Uh, so, but I do also have an entrepreneurial spirit where I want to give back, and this is my platform, and this is a form of me giving back. Is is having the podcast, writing my books. I I I I get so much gratification right. out of helping people, and that's what what I love to do. But what you've done is you've identified the the exact thing that I have to walk people through, which is figuring out how they want to help people. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're making dish detergent. I don't care if you're making shoes or you're building websites, but at the core of it, you have to figure out who you're trying to help right and why you're trying to help them what is it inside of you that's driving you towards helping this person uh-huh. and the, whatever product service or whatever fits that and you've yeah. done that right yeah. you, you've written your book you do your speaking you have figured out that you want to help people do the thing that it took you a long time to figure out right shorten that gap help yeah. them run towards the quitting a little faster than maybe it took you yeah and uh, and then that brings you just joy and fulfillment yeah so josh you you said you're a serial entrepreneur and your first stab mm-hmm. at entrepreneurship ended up in a, in a in a in a massive failure right tell 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 me about oh, that boy. and what you learned from that so well I'll, I'll tell you one story to tell you that story actually my first stab at entrepreneurship was uh one afternoon my grandma said i'm going to sam's club and i said cool let me ride with you mm-hmm. and i bought a case of pad paper and a case of pencils and pens and i sold that shit out of my locker <laughs> in junior high so you are a hustler <laughs> you are- <laughs> you are a bona fide junior high school hustler. I I, I under pens I undercut the uh, the bookstore by a good nickel each, and so they figured it out and they shut me down. Okay, uh, <laughs> but my my actual first real um, big business where mm-hmm. I had employees, uh, I started a print shop. I was doing uh, outsourced graphic design. I was working with uh, some pretty top consulting companies, so that we were able to work with some major franchise brands that I can't say here, mm-hmm. but. I mean, we were we were doing well, um, and I was seeing all this money that I was spending and on print stuff, and I was like, "Hey, let's get smart. Let's open up a print shop where we can save all this money, right? And we can do the work ourselves, and we'll keep that margin in house." Got you. So we spent money we didn't have. Mm-hmm. We rented space we didn't need. Uh oh. We leased machines we couldn't afford, and we quickly realized that owning this print shop. We were spending 90% of our time with 80-year-old ladies want to make a dollar copy. Mm. And none of our time with our big spender clients because all of our time was monopolized by this these teeny tiny purchases. Yeah, yeah. So I had to quit thinking I could do everything. Got you. Quit thinking you could do everything. Because all that did was led to um, filing bankruptcy, which I fought tooth and nail. Wow. I was so like, you're telling me you... You were bankrupt? Oh, yeah. Okay. And not that long ago. Okay. I we I, I fought it for several years after we closed the business because I was just damned and determined that I was going to make enough money to pay that shit off. Got you. And so I had to quit thinking I could do that. Yeah. Because the bank account couldn't do it. There you go. I could work 90 hours a day, and mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. 
And that was a tough one. That was difficult. Giving that up, admitting to the loss and the failure. Ooh, that's a hard one. Because until you do that, you could just lie to yourself all day. And keep on getting broke. Oh, uh, more er, broke. And more broke. And, and then er. and then some guys like, well, I can give you this loan. Whew. And you're like, okay. And then it's like forty percent interest. Ooh. And then it doesn't it doesn't dig you out of a hole. It just digs you deeper. Yep. And and you have to realize that trying to do everything for everyone and creating that situation, all that does is just lead into more disillusion. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to be what it's taught me is to be laser focused. Laser focused on who I want, what I want to do how I want to help them, right. you know, and, and I still, because that's in me, like mm-hmm. it's always in me to be like, Oh, we could do that too. Oh, yeah. we could do that too. Yeah. I'm always fighting that. Even today, you know, I, I was looking at something like, Oh, we could add that to growthly services. And I'm like, stop it. Mm-hmm. Like that's not gone in me. Yeah. 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 And I still fight that. Yeah. So if you could, if, if, if you say would, would give our audience, uh, the thing that you we need to quit from a business perspective, from an entrepreneurial perspective. What do you What do you think that would, or wh- what's What's your uh, recommendation? To like our the most important thing to quit. Yes, from an entrepreneurship uh, standpoint. Anybody out there wanting to be in business, thinking that they want to be in business, um, I took away a really good one uh, from you just now. In you know, we have to quit operating from an emotional standpoint Mm -hmm. and because oftentimes we fall in love and these are our babies Mm -hmm. and we have this inability to be real right you can't separate from it because you can't treat it like a living human being that's right you need to cut the business you need to make it bleed Mm -hmm. when you make it bleed then it grows stronger i've said this once i'll say it a thousand times humans cannot learn without pain Mm-hmm. If you can't create, if you surround yourself with people, so maybe this is one of those things. Yeah, it is. I love it. Don't surround yourself with people who will tell you that that your baby is beautiful. Ooh, we call that yes men. You need to surround yourself with people who look at the picture of your baby and be like, shit. <laughs> that baby ugly. Because I'm serious, man. <laughs> I meet people, and this is what they tell me, Jason. They're like, but everybody told me this was a great idea. Mm. I don't give a shit. How many of them gave you money? Mm. Great question. None of them, because you asked your grandma, your auntie, you know, you're surrounding yourself with people who don't know your customer. Well, they're not your customer. Right. And I guess I'm going to tag this with the the number one thing that I think is the most important is quit. Stop. Quit thinking that the customer isn't the most important. Mm. People tell me a lot of times that this business is so important to me. And I'll say, but you as the business owner, guess what your customer cares about that? Like absolutely nothing. Yeah. They don't care about you. No. They care about the service, yep. they care about the product, they care mm-hmm. about how you deliver it, and they care about how you serve them. But you as a person, nine times out of 10, they don't necessarily care about you. Now, as you build the relationship, right, and you form one that changes, exactly. but at the beginning, they don't care. And you start to feel like as a business owner, you're like, these people should just love me, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm busting my ass for them, but the yeah. thing is, is they don't care. Yeah. And you have to realize that you're there to serve them, they're not there to pay you. Yes, yes, wow. We're 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 dropping gems today. Uh, Joshua to, Joshua to... is bringing the heat uh, <laughs> from a, from a business perspective, and he's telling us. And I, I think I really think he wants this belt and to earn the belt. Um, but I want to shift the conversation a little bit, Josh. Now you you blatantly told people out there that that you were fat, and um, I want to really understand because I think it's a really good story because mm-hmm. you've. You've lost a lot of weight. Oh man! Right? Uh, yeah. So, so I want because uh, there may be people out there struggling uh, with weight loss and struggling with insecurities that you that you talked about and struggling with depression out there and this whole mental health, you know, uh, right. concept. Well, it's all connected. Yeah, it is. It's really all connected. Um, so, how much? How much? How much weight did you lose? Well, um, I, I honestly, I, I don't know the full math, but okay. I can tell you this. In 2015, I weighed um, over 500 pounds. Okay. Uh, today, I weigh 365. Awesome. That's awesome. I mean, and, and I'll be honest, even during the weight loss, mm-hmm. like I denied the weight loss. 
I denied the progress. Tell me more about that. You I lived, I lived in the insecurity of how fat I was. And so people would be like, hey, you're losing weight. And I'm like, bullshit, I'm losing weight. Uh. I was still, didn't matter how many pounds I dropped, I was still 520 pounds gotcha. in my head. Uh. My soul was still 520 pounds, huh. right? Yeah. It took until my pants were falling off my ass while I was walking, and they're literally dropping, and I'm grabbing them and pulling them up. Uh-huh. And, and, and even then, uh-huh. even then, you know what I said? What'd Did I say? say I lose weight? No. I said my say? damn pants are stretched out. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing the power <laughs> that our minds have. <laughs> my wife says, you're losing weight. I said, no, my damn pants are stretched out, and we need to go amazing. buy some new pants. Amazing. It took going to the store. And trying on brand new ones and realizing, like, I could fit another child in here. Mm -hmm. And then going down a size and down a size. And it took down going down three sizes before I realized. And now the size that I'm at three sizes down is even a little loose. Gotcha. Right? But now, at that moment, that was the moment. Mm -hmm. Putting on size pants three sizes smaller than I've been wearing that I realized mm -hmm. I'm losing weight. So what did you have to quit, though? Like, what what did you have to quit in order to lose almost 200 pounds, Josh. First, th first thing I had to quit was uh -huh. uh, was definitely soda. Soda. And I'm a soda-holic, bro. Got you. Like, I'm not the kind of guy who can go to the store and quit drink soda. one. Mm. If I drink one, that pop. I'm going to go on an eight-month bender. Wow. When I was working graphics, mm -hmm. and I was I was very sedentary job, right? I sit all the time. Mm-hmm. I could drink, you know, those big buckets you used to get from the from like the gas stations, you know, sixty four ounce cups. Yeah, yeah. You know, for like truck drivers or whatever. Right, right, right. I could drink two of those a day of Mountain Dew. Wow. I drink one in the morning, and at lunch break, I'll go get another one. You were lit, like, and then doing the Dew. Literally, I would go home and drink a, a two liter. Wow. Right. It was nothing for me to do that. Wow. Uh, and and now I mean now I'm a diabetic. Uh huh. Thanks to years of Mountain Dew. Yeah. Out of way, Pepsi. There you go. It's actually not Pepsi's fault, but they do make that very easy. <laughs> it's my choice. Even to, I'm going to tell you something. Just like an alcoholic, just like somebody who smokes, I was at Walmart today getting some fruit that I could snack on, and mm -hmm. at the checkout line, I'm staring down the barrel of that Mountain Dew like, can I have just one? Wow. So quitting, the thing about quitting that you need to really internalize everybody that's watching mm -hmm. this is you quit every day. We do. You don't like quit something and then <laughs> magically it's done right you have to quit that thing every day okay. every day i have to look at a soda and say me being more healthy and not dying on my wife is more important than drinking that soda the pain of staying the same mm. right has to be i mean it, it has to be greater than the change you you know it, it does it yeah you have to realize, like, it has to be a mental shift. And for me, when I when my pants were lower and I made that mental shift, something in me just cracked, right? Yeah. Like, it was ready. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I started just, my diet is not a diet. Like, I'm not keto. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, low carb. I'm not anything. I'm just make better choices. Make better choices. And so what make better choices means is if I want Chinese, I eat Chinese, mm -hmm. right? If I want pizza, I'll eat a pizza. Mm -hmm. But make better choices, yeah. right? Get thin crust, not deep dish. There you go. Right? Get, right, you know, right. uh, when, when we were driving towards Arizona to see my wife's family in, um, in for Christmas, mm -hmm. we pull into this gas station and they had uh, Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Dairy Queen, because I know my, life, my wife, she loves ice cream. Mm -hmm. So we pull in and I was like, immediately we pull in and I'm kind of already thinking to myself like, you don't want that fucking ice cream. Yeah. Right? But my body said, get the ice cream, bro. Right. We've right. had ice cream for years. We yeah. love ice cream. Yeah. You're eating it on the road. You got nothing else to do. Let's eat. Yeah. And so we walk in, and she starts to see it in my face. Mm -hmm. And she said, are you sure you want that? And I'm like, I, I don't know if I do. And she's like, well, would it be okay if I got some too? Because she wasn't in the make better choices frame of mind yet. Got you. And so she got it, and, and I broke down, and I got one. We get in the car. I took one bite. Mm -hmm. The condemnation that I felt from head to toe mm. of just that one bite of ice cream, I was like, you, you, why Why are you doing this? Got you. Why did you buy it? Why did you put it in your mouth? Because you know you don't want it. Right. And it was just the years of muscle memory, of emotional eating, of this is what you do. 
and it's taken me a long time to break those. I'm not saying I've completely broke it. I still eat my ice cream right. and I love it. But when I get ice cream, I get the little tiny container. Yeah. Because I know I'm gonna eat the whole damn thing. Right, right, right. So better get the small one <laughs> than exactly. get the get the full, yeah. you know, thing. And but, I think I, I really think what's important is knowing that it's a constant struggle. Oh, every day. And you have to be one, you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to be courageous yeah. to be brutally honest with yourself. And then it's a constant struggle each and every day. Yeah. You have uh, one side, you know, you have the angel on one side, which is your conscience. Yeah. And then you have the devil on the other side telling you, uh, go go eat that ice cream. You know what I mean? And uh, quitting is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it, it's You really have to be brave. It is a self-love mm. uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And... T talk to me about the people, right? The people that maybe helped in the process or maybe some people that you, you had to quit out of the process. Oh, definitely, definitely. So one, a lot of the groups of people that I've had to quit are um, just complainers. Complainers. I've quit the complainers. I've had to quit complainers because there's, there's so much in life that could be different or could be changed mm -hmm. that it's more important to make the change than it is to complain. And when you have those people around you, they're, they're what I call emotional vampires. Oh, so they just blood suckers suck it out of you. They take your energy. Mm. They take your happiness. They figure it's like this. When I was a kid, I worked at Walmart for a day. Or, uh, I worked at McDonald's for a day, mm -hmm. a day. Wow. Because that one day was all it took for me to realize that these people hate their lives and they want me to hate mine too. <laughs> and so I had to just give up on that and find a different way to make money. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to quit complainers because they, they don't have an outlook that allows them to find happiness. Mm. And, and if I want to find happiness, which, you know, for me means different things than it does for other people. Mm -hmm. But if I want to find that, I have to be, I have to be in a space where I'm able to think about it. And as I said earlier, I fight a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. And depression does, doesn't come from bad days. Mm. Depression comes from good days. Talk to me about that. So for me, if I have a really great day, mm. well, let's say in sales, let's say I, I've I sold three offices today or I booked a new coaching client and that money rang through and it hit the bank, mm -hmm. the next day will suck. Wow. Emotionally. Mm. Because I went up and then I come down. Mm -hmm. Now let's just say I went and sold three offices the next day, three of those people backed out. Now I go down and have to come back up. Got you. And so it's a constant struggle to maintain an even keel. And uh -huh. if you invite other people who are always going to be drawing on that, mm -hmm. always taking away from that emotionally, mm -hmm like you're just gonna it just it's just failure it's yeah. you know it's not gonna work out and so i have to get rid of those people because i know i'm already going to be doing this right i don't need their help right and i have to surround my people myself with people who are going to encourage be honest right. we're not looking for yes people uh -huh. but people who will find a way to be encouraging my wife is my is my chiefest supporter there you go you know and every day she you know like what what can i do to help how can i serve you like what's you know what's something i can do to help you today mm -hmm. and how was you know the sales today and she doesn't ask the questions that make me sad mm -hmm. and she takes away the things that m trigger me the most like she right. handles the bank account got you i don't get in the bank account got you and when i know it's low uh -huh. and today is low <laughs> uh, i don't check it yeah, because yeah. I know that's a trigger for me. Uh -huh. And I allow her to take care of that. Jenna, who works here at Growthly, she's our COO. She takes care of the business money. So, again, it frees me uh -huh. to be me yeah, 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 and yeah. not worry about all of those things. And so surrounding yourself with a support system uh -huh. instead of emotional vampires is extremely important. Awesome. Awesome. So where do you go from here? Uh, you know, what, what are your aspirations uh, what do you still need to quit <laughs> there are as we sit here in the qu quitters revolution? Yes. Cause, cause we, we still have things that we need to quit. Oh, amen. You know, yes, yes. We are providing a platform that we want to promote quitting. We want to take away that negative uh, stereotype that's associated with quitting. Um, and we are operating in a constant, uh, self-reflection where we are constantly 
have to operate in a in a place of of self awareness, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the enemy is always trying to uh, defeat or have us defeat ourselves, and yeah. you know we have to operate in a position of self mastery. So going forward, what are the some what are some things that that you have to quit right now? Yeah, there are a few things that I'm attempting to quit, mm -hmm. uh, and I say attempting because I have not succeeded yet. Okay. <clears throat> and which is perfectly fine. But you have recognized right. the fact that you need to quit these things. Right. So for me, some of the things I need to quit, um, still today, I mentioned this one earlier, quit trying to think that I can be everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, because I can't make them happy. That's right. Uh, I, I, I can't fulfill all those things, and so I need to be better at picking what it is I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. One of the things I need to quit is um, I, I definitely – you know, even though I educate people and I tell them it's important not to be emotional about their business, I'm an emotional basket case. And so I need to quit applying so much personal emotion. When someone does or says something negative to the business, I take it on me. Yeah. You know, uh, we had an individual who uh, left in the middle of the night and didn't pay his bills, right? But more than that, he kind of created some fraud on the company that we didn't know about. Mm. That's personal. Fraud. Yeah. I take that very personal. And it wasn't in my name, it was in the business's name, but that's me. Mm -hmm. And so I, while I, you know, that's important that we take legal action against whatever it is that he did, I, I have to stop taking that personally. Mm. It's not my responsibility to make them a good person. There you go. I can make good people better. Mm -hmm. I can't make shit people better. Okay. They have to decide that. Mm. Once they decide that, let's roll. That's the key. But you you can't – you remember – I don't know if you remember being in youth group. Maybe maybe you were, maybe you weren't. But did, did you guys ever do ever do this thing where, like, one person gets on a chair? Uh-huh. And then we tell, we tell the whole group of kids at the bottom, like, okay, now you person on the chair, lift those people up. Oh. And so everybody grabs everybody's arms and everybody starts pulling. Well, what happens every time? Mm -hmm. The group pulls a person down. Right. Because you can't, you can't lift that person up where you are. But if that person was where you were, you could lift them up a little bit higher, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it, for me, it's it's the difference of the, the, the quitting is I have I want to help people, mm -hmm. but I cannot save people. Love it. Love it. And, and so I have to f identify my difference mm -hmm. between helping and enabling, between trying to save someone versus trying to help, you know, help them achieve a goal. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, you know, for my business, it's... <laughs> I tend to always go the, the far side and, you know, try to help people that maybe don't necessarily, I'm not ready to be helped. Right, right. And that ends, ends badly for me. Yeah. But that's not their fault. Yeah. Because they didn't change. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought it on. Wow. And so that's the quit that, that's really important for me. Yeah. Quit bringing, bringing stuff on your plate, right? Wow. Well, Joshua, I want to thank you for stopping by and being our... Uh, first guest on the Quitters Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, you were brutally honest. You uh, were self-reflective. Mm -hmm. uh, you were very courageous. Continue to be courageous. Um, let's tell our audience how they can follow you. How the, you know sure. what's up next for you, and how they can potentially even connect with you uh, on social media and other avenues. So uh, if you look on Facebook under Joshua Webb, you can't miss the hair. Like, it's going to be super-duper obvious uh, <laughs> who you're looking at. Uh, and I do encourage everyone to, you know, friend me on Facebook. Um, I, I accept most friend requests unless you look like a totally creep, and then I probably won't. Quit. <laughs> Quit accepting <laughs> friend requests. No. Nah. No, I'm serious. Like, like that's a thing. Like, if you accept friend requests and they don't have any mutual friends, like, you're just being a moron. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> anyway... Uh, so I anyway, follow me there. I, I live in Messenger. You guys can always ask me a question about business. You can ask me questions. I'm, I As I have time, I do respond. Um, another way is if you want to reach out directly, you can email me at Joshua at Growthly. That's J-O-S-H-U-A at G-R-O-W-T-H-L-I dot com. Uh, growthly dot com is our website. If, if you're looking towards being a business, if you're looking towards starting something or maybe you have something that is uh, already running and you need some space to scale that, uh, you can get in touch with us um, from the website, from Facebook, and, and we definitely want to help you with that. We want to help you make better decisions, just like my weight loss. Mm hmm I want to help you make better business decisions because you can read a ton of books, you can Google shit all day, but there's nothing like sitting in a room with somebody and asking them a few questions 
to really make better decisions for yourself. Right. Um, and, and really, really, that's it. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to go to quittersrevolution.com. I want to encourage you guys to uh, click on the link that's in the description of this episode and go and sign up because uh, as the more guests come and you guys are sharing more of this, I don't want you guys to miss that. Right. Yeah. So so thank you very much. I think I think you've done enough, Josh. I think you've done enough. Uh, you are a quitting champion. So let me... Uh, here we go. Help you out with that belt. Uh, Great job. Here we go. Give you guys Great a little, job. Give you a little close up here on that belt. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just, uh, just want to let you guys know he's not going to let me keep this. <laughs> no, no. We're not going <laughs> to let that. <laughs> you have done enough to temporarily right. uh, borrow my For the quitters next five minutes. <laughs> revolution <laughs> uh, belt. You are a quitting champion, and we and I thank you very much for, for that. I'm going I'm to stop you real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to ask you one question. Sure. This is your first show, right? It is. What did you have to quit in order to do this show? I had to quit uh, not wanting to be on social media, right? So our our very pa platform is on Facebook Live, mm -hmm. and i i would I would have a tendency to shy away from the camera. Mm -hmm. Although I'm an outgoing person, although uh, I am uh, the life of the party, so to speak, at times, I. I did have some insecurities with always being out uh, on video in social media land, and I had to quit that in order to uh, do this show and bring this show to you. Uh, and and that was it. this show is is a living, breathing example of real people having to quit things in order to take themselves their careers mm. to the next level. Mm. And the only way for us to really achieve what our God-given purpose is mm. uh, in life is to quit the the thoughts, the feelings, the behaviors, yeah. and oftentimes the people that have been holding us back. So it's a constant struggle. I'm human. Uh, everybody out there is human. You're not alone. Mm -mm. Um, I mean, that's the number one thing I want everyone to take away from this everybody that you know is going through the same shit you're going through that's right and to think that you're the only one is just giving yourself more isolation mm -hmm. and if you can let yourself know that everybody else is going through this suddenly you can find people and you can get through it together that's right quit living in isolation yeah quit living in isolation i want everybody to uh Follow me, Jason B. Montanez on Instagram uh, and Twitter, uh, Jason B. Montanez on Facebook Live. Uh, I have another website, 99thingstoquit.com. Uh, my new book is out right now. I've got 99 Things to Quit and Giving Up is One, a practical guide on what to quit and how to live your very best life. Again, Joshua, thank you so much for, for coming. Uh, you were real. You are a Quitters Revolution <laughs> champion. And until next time, quitting is winning.